Good day, everybody. My name is Samantha Kali, and I'm a principal engineer with the SAGE Group. At SAGE Automation, we have performed multiple microgrid projects across Australia for both behind the meter and grid connected solutions. This presentation will take you through case studies, lessons learned, and provide tips and tricks on how to optimize your control integration. Are you able to quantify the return on investment on your microgrid? Can you measure the reliability of your system? This presentation will show you how this can be achieved through microgrid control optimization and will demonstrate how to decrease energy consumption costs and improve reliability. What are the top trending microgrid types? Remote hybrid systems. These systems are also known as off-grid systems because they are physically isolated from the utility grid and operate in island mode at all times. These sites have shown a large decrease in diesel fuel consumption through installation of hybrid controls and microgrids. Grid-connected microgrids. These are physically connected to the utility to provide frequency and voltage regulation, real and active power support, and demand response. They're usually installed to improve power quality and increase reliability. Networked microgrids. These are a system of several typically small DERs that are typically managed by supervisory control systems and used on smart cities and community microgrids. Also by utilities for adaptive protection schemes. What is microgrid value proposition? There are three distinct value propositions that are useful for segmenting their market. Increasing reliability, reducing fuel consumption, and reducing emissions, which explains our top three microgrids. Reliability microgrids. These are usually used by emergency services and military bases, and they are the ability to separate from the grid intentionally. They are usually UPS-based systems that are now being replaced with renewable energy and load management to achieve optimum reliability. Cost-saving microgrids. These are used to minimize the use of diesel fuel and are, and are usually three types of microgrids, that is hybrid, solar, and CHP. The last one is environmental benefits. Those are and to incorporate low cost, low emission projects, implement net zero projects, and reduce greenhouse gases. Steps to optimize your microgrid. A transition architecture leading to low carbon energy systems. These systems are still required to be a proven technology, scalable, customizable, adaptable, and cyber secure. Control system integration is the key to not drastically changing the current architecture. Case studies show how utilities use existing operational technology to implement microgrid control in energy management systems. Step two, an optimal energy technology mix. It is important to note that Reliability and economic value is directly proportional to the advanced microgrid. Example, an advanced microgrid having hybrid and high penetration with CHP, seamless islanding and grid services, is far more beneficial to you than a hybrid system and grid services that is not optimized. Step three, increased flexibility. This is achieved by a microgrid control system which uses advanced automated microgrid control techniques. Step four, data and analytics. 
These are achieved by the use of energy management systems. And finally, virtualized power plants. These are ultimate benefits. Works in the following manner. Customers will choose to share control of their distributed energy resource with the retailer. The retailer combines different DERs on behalf of customers and aggregates balances and energy fluctuations by increasing and decreasing power based on demand. Customers can save by being smaller systems, a part of a larger system and providing market services. Integration planning. Microgrid integration planning needs to be done upfront in a project with all disciplines responsible for the energy strategy to be present. There are a few planning considerations when handling microgrid integration. For example, aligning your microgrid team to ensure your energy strategy is aligned, aligning the OT capital and energy projects, which can produce cost savings and leads to standardization with your OT technologies, new technology integration to SCADA systems. You need to limit the different technology platforms being introduced to the operator and legacy system integration. This can be difficult and should be evaluated upfront in a project. Life cycle and maintenance, limit spares holding and provide training and maintenance to staff. The aim in planning phase hopes to achieve the following, but is not limited to. Defining your return on investment parameters, considering your risks and evaluating them through risk assessments, standardizing your design and future proofing it, retaining control of your microgrid IP through standardization, and most importantly, developing an integration standard for future projects for your organization. With regards to microgrid control, it is key that it is apparent and that microgrid control forms the basis of optimizing your microgrid. With regards to optimal control schemes, it is seen that the hierarchical control scheme is a good compromise to having just centralized or decentralized control schemes. The structure contains three levels of control, that is your primary, secondary, and tertiary level. Your primary level is designed to satisfy and stabilize voltage and frequency, as well as to offer plug and play capabilities to DRs and properly share active and reactive power among them, preferably without a communication link. Also to mitigate circulating currents. Secondary control is responsible for voltage and frequency deviations caused by variations in load, as well as can be designed to satisfy power quality requirements. The third level is tertiary control, which is responsible for power import and export to the grid and provide energy management. Microgrid control concerns to be considered and managed include the following, power quality, with regards to harmonics and unbalances in microgrids, communications regarding challenges to, smart, to integrating smart meters and data concentrators. These require stringent integration requirements in accordance with industry standards. And lastly, protection. Protection regarding in microgrids requires source, network, and bi-directional protection. These concerns cover electrical integration considerations on the controller scheme and is usually utility influenced. A less utility influenced controller framework has been designed recently by IEEE, which is the 
IEEE 2030.7 standard for microgrid controllers. This will be discussed shortly. Energy management systems is have intelligent distribution controls that allows you to optimize your energy assets. For example, renewable to energy storage, which helps you coordinate your system to achieve power resiliency. It should be noted that if your microgrid controller system is not robust, you will not utilize your renewable assets to its full potential. Distributed controls via energy management systems ensure maximum cost savings and resiliency by optimally integrating renewables with energy storage. Energy management system can also provide energy cost savings via implementation of functions such as peak sharing and demand response. It should be noted that energy management systems can range from being a simple to advanced system depending on your application. And it can be integrated and implemented by various design options and does not have to be a costly affair. Control compliance. As discussed earlier, an alternative controller framework is governed by IEEE 2030.7 for microgrid controllers. This concept relies on four blocks, which is device level control, local area, supervisory, and grid layer control. Another standard worth mentioning in that suite is IEEE 2030.5. This governs distributed energy management systems. A wide variety of complex algorithms sometimes makes it difficult for small microgrids to actually implement energy management systems. There are actually cost-effective off-the-shelf devices compliant with this IEEE standard that makes it usable for mainstream control. Projects can simplify control with these type of devices and manage fleet control systems. The following slide indicates renewable technology integration in your microgrid and some lessons learned. It's important to note that renewable technology can provide cheaper real power, but can fall short on certain system reliability requirements when integrated to existing systems. Considerations should be made regarding system modeling on three levels, support for your RE technology that's not sourced locally, coordination between system integrators, OEMs, and service providers for control, communication, and contracts, legacy system integration challenges, as well as safety and design and hybrid system integration. These factors are one of the few that could influence the outcome and optimization of your renewable energy solution. Companies are currently on a drive to integrate OT and IT systems. Cyber security fares highly on that list. However, some designs can be overly complicated and difficult to implement. Cybersecurity does not have to be overcomplicated, and by following network standards and cybersecurity uh, frameworks, you can simplify your process. The following challenge questions need to be asked about your microgrid. Control versus data. Have you solved growing data demands by separating data from control? Remote access. Do you secondary access security with active approval and log levels of all changes? Situational awareness. Do you have real-time awareness from generation to consumption including all mission critical KPIs. Internet access. Have you completed a compressive security assessment? These are a few considerations that you would need 
to highlight when dealing with cybersecurity. The following slides are case studies, pages implemented with major crimes on behind the meter and grid connected solutions. All three aspects of microgrid control value proposition have been met in these projects. Further to that, Sage has been on the OT panel for both these clients and understand the microgrid and control network. Sage has designed microgrid control and management systems using existing equipment that is currently contained on the utilities preferred list. This allows the plan to be standardized and maintained across all sites and aligned with the OT infrastructure. The organization maintains control of its IP and maintenance, training, and spares holding are minimal. Legacy systems are also uh, being made easier and simplified, and the utility was not constrained to a single OEM or technology integration. Furthermore, the energy management systems was developed on existing company platforms. The first case study is the Power and Water Corporation Solar Setup Project. In this project, Sage Automation was a system integrator, and the goal of the project was to set up and transform the way energy is produced in remote communities in the Northern Territory. This would be achieved by reducing diesel consumption costs across all remote communities. The project was partly funded by Aruna, and this program added 10 megawatts of PV generation capacity to existing Northern Territory diesel power stations. Approximately 30 communities benefited from this project. The result, approximately 50% of diesel savings for all remote diesel power stations managed by power and water crop subsidiaries that have a best installed, and nine megawatts of PV generation is installed in medium contribution configuration with 15% fuel savings. The following slide shows the integration of the renewable technology to reduce diesel consumption. The slides are shown for a sunny day and cloudy day and behavior and interactions of battery, solar and diesel are shown on the diagrams. This the sunny day indicates best managing the system while charging, diesel operation overnight, and PV meeting all loads. PV is then curtailed when the best is full, and battery discharges at the end of the day. On a cloudy day, diesel remains on while excess PV charges battery at the start of the day, and the battery smooths solar intermittency by rapidly switching between charging and discharging while maintaining the grid. The following two slides depict frequency stability under cloudy conditions and an example of transition from diesel operation to best grid operation. A full project summary report and lessons learned can be found on the Power and Water Corp website. The following case study is with SA Water for the Zero Cost Energy Future project. This project is an installation of high penetration of solar and battery energy storage to achieve zero net energy costs. The context behind this, it's actually obvious because energy costs are approximately 60 million per annum, and prices are increasing quite drastically, and network charges are exorbitant. The portfolio capability includes new energy infrastructure for an install of 152 megawatts of solar generation and 35 megawatts of energy storage. The same seven main initiatives for optimizing and controlling these systems 
as required by SE Water include the following demand response, biogas generation, backup diesel, energy efficiency, solar PV, energy storage, and predictive optimization and control. Sage's Rowan's project was responsible for being involved in complete optimization and control for the system. Further to that, the system has been future engineered from being a behind the major solution to a grid connected solution. I'd now like to play a short video highlighting concepts discussed in this presentation. Thank you very much for your time today. Please feel free to contact us via LinkedIn or details provided at the end of the session.